Passion for Collecting is the official podcast of Collector Archive Services. Visit CollectorArchive.com. We grade and preserve your collectible toys, video games, sports memorabilia, and package trading cards. All right, here we are in Investor's Corner. Investor's Corner is the segment of the show where we look at some of the top toy sales for the month previous, so in this case, the month of October, um, to kind of get people an idea of the investment side of collecting and to kind of get an idea of what some of these higher end things sell for, some of the grail pieces that we may or may not have. Um, so today we're doing a top 10 list. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get started with number 10 is uh, one we haven't seen before uh, from a really popular toy line. It is the Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Undercover Leonardo, um, 97 back, made in 1994. It was graded a 75 plus and sold as a buy it now for $5,999. Now, I have never seen this one carded in person. I've seen a couple of loose ones. This is a tough one to get. We've we've graded we've graded more than a few of the undercover figures, um, so I've seen those come through. But yeah, I mean they're pretty rare. I I would have never guessed that they were that they would go for that value. I'd think a couple thousand bucks, two three thousand, not fifty seven hundred. That's whoo. Well, you have that line was so late that right, the distribution right. on that was non existent. In fact, I want to say that KB was closing stores then. Right. So you literally had. Stores being closed in one of the biggest distributors out there, and then a line that just wasn't living anymore. And yeah, yeah. Um, the next one is one that you know it'd be cool to see in person, um, just because you know graded. I, Brendan one time used to um, use a phrase for some of these large items: uh, coffee table. Um, so. <laughs> It's a uh, Mattel Masters of the Universe, uh, 1983, 12 back Castle Gray Skull, graded 75 and sold for a buy it now, also for um, $5,999. And that is one big piece. One... A, lot of, a lot of acrylic. To me, that actually seems like decent value, six grand. Yeah. I, w- I would pay it. If I collected box items, I would pay that for that. Well, I think that, you know, when you, you talk about an item like that and specifically the conditions are so hard to, so hard to keep those boxes in mint condition. But, you know, to answer your question, I think is that how does some of these end up that way? Um, I mean, you have kids, you understand, you stash stuff away and sometimes you forget. And that's where some of this stuff comes from is it was stashed away and forgotten. All right. So uh, number eight on the list is a doozy because of the grade. I mean, like, this is an awesome piece anyways, but uh, a Kenner Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, 1982, four back, Indiana Jones, graded a 90. I mean, so you, you people talk about grades, and, and, and in the toy toy grading world, an 85 is, is awesome. A 90 is almost unheard of. This thing is unpunched, no price sticker, crystal clear bubble this is probably like the best one in the world right and it was listed at 10 grand and it sold for six thousand and ye so what's what's an 80 um in deal for like 1500 two grand maybe 1500 maybe, maybe even more maybe about because that was kind of it's that's kind of the middle grade on it right that's kind of like the benchmark grade for it is an 80 whereas it's not an 85 for it right. like 85s yeah. are you don't find them so yeah, but my, my point is that, you know, kind of what you're saying about the card grade and how the values can go up significantly. That's a significant yeah. difference in value between an 80, 85, and a 90 for that for that indie. Um, so maybe on some of the key pieces, we are seeing that appreciation in, in value based on significantly high grades on certain items and toys. Well, here, guys. Here you go. So I just uh, – quick search. So I don't. This is not uh, four back. I guess it's 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 the nine back. The next the nine one. back's harder to find. Yeah. So AFA eighty uh, sold. It was an auction, forty five bids, uh, just over thirty three hundred bucks. Oh wow, an eighty. Yeah. But and yeah, then, I expected it was that high. Indiana Jones stuff has actually really spiked. An, an awesome piece. I mean, just it's 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 amazing to look at that. Um, so the next one on the list um, is a Mattel Masters of the Universe 1982 um, 
eight back man at arms uh, with a clear bubble, uh, no warranty. It was uh, graded in 80 and sold for a best offer of $6,500. An eight back clear bubble is pretty dang sweet. And two things with this one. I went, I went and actually looked at this post. Um, so you remember uh, we had talked about the red dot, right? The red dot on man at arms. This happens yep. to be one of those. So one of the rarer earlier versions. And this is actually a test market card. So uh, on the back, even though it's no warranty, uh, the no taglines or SKU numbers. So this this is actual the uh, test market men in arms. So even okay. More, so that really does more sense. Why would we'll go that high then? Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say because you're not generally seeing men in arms, you know, supersede He Man in that back configuration with a no warranty in the eight. Well, yeah, if there was a no warranty clear bubble He Man, that'd probably be fifteen thousand dollar piece. E- easily, we yeah. you've definitely you've seen a lot of. Post ten or you know past ten thousand dollar prices for He Man and Skeletor high high grade eight backs. So you know you're seeing a lot of those eight backs really creep up. I mean they're they're and then every then, month every month we do this one or two appears on the top ten. Yeah, yeah. Every month. Um, we have our next uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle piece. Um, this one. Uh, is it is a later of a, a late of an edition, but a very very expensive one. So it's the Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 51 back scratch, who is a cat. Um, this is not graded and sold for it was a uh, it was up for sale for nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and sold as a best offer for seven thousand five hundred. This is I think the third one we've had on here, and all three are not graded. So all of you people that are sitting on these ungraded scratches, I know a grading company that you might want to look yeah. into. Do, do we know what the prices of this one relative to the other ones are? Yeah, there was one in April. It was a fifty-five back, so slightly yeah. later. Uh, not graded, as uh, Chris uh-huh. said, five thousand in an open auction. Uh, and then the other one was that uh, lot of two. Remember, it was a scratch in a hot right, spot. Right, that was a really right. good deal. Both of them ungraded. Buy it now. Went for five grand. That was wow. back. In, that was back in February. Yeah. And then you even even uh, showed a you know a spread of what they would sell for separately. And um, that was a that was a great deal. Two of them yeah. for five grand. So. All right, number five, and I, I love this one, and we'll, we'll get into it, but um. It's a Mattel WWE uh, 2010 Elite Series 1 Jeff Hardy. Um, it's an unproduced mint on card. It's ungraded. Um, it sold for a buy it now. Um, it was listed in, in uh, Canadian dollars at 10000 and it sold for Canadian dollars 10000 which uh, translates to $7,985. And the person in the description mentioned that he had bought this at, um, at a toy show years ago. And I and I love that because you know sometimes you know you see oh this is they never made this and he probably got it for a song or probably paid what was quite a bit of money for it back then, but now you know it, it's worth tons because it was never released and he picked it up probably thinking you know it's cool to have something that's not out there and and it's just appreciated value because now people really have an appreciation for these unproduced items. Um, so the next one on the list. Um, is a Mattel Masters of the Universe um, 1983 12 back, so not an 8 back, so 12 back um, He Man with a clear bubble. Um, it was graded 85 and it was it, it was a straight 85. Um, it was up for sale for 15,000 and sold for 8,750. Um, which boy, I, I would be afraid to make that offer for 8,750, that's almost a half price offer, but this thing is stunning. And to be straight eighty fives in a clear bubble, He Man is just gorgeous. So, so I actually have this piece as well. It's a CS eighty, um, so you know, not as not as good of a condition as the the straight eighty five. Um, but I, I'm surprised to see that get that high for a twelve back because it's it's not as hard to get a clear back clear bubble twelve back as it is a clear bubble eight back. Right. Um, and I think I paid a thousand bucks ungraded for mine four or five years ago. And again, that's a, that's a significant period of time. I'll give uh, you twelve hundred for it right now. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm trust me, I'm thrilled to see that. It makes it <laughs> maybe worth four or five grand now if I wanted to sell it. Yeah. I could have to monitor it. But, well, you know. 
go, going back to Star Wars, yeah. um, you see a, you see a lot of this a lot of this stuff when, when you get the eight backs that are priced out of the range. People are going for the twelves with Star Wars. You the twelve get backs priced out of the range. You people are are, are picking up you know twenty one backs, forty one yeah. backs. Yeah. So you know if you can't you know because uh, in this condition straight eighty fives. I mean you know you're looking at <clears throat> the fifteen thousand probably easily for a twelve for an eight back. You know, so and, and good luck finding a clear eight back like that. Right. It, it yeah. Nice. We we had a uh, we had an eight back in March. It was an eighty though, and it was a yeah. G it was a G two card. Buy it now, eight grand. So it was uh, the later of the eight backs in G2? eighty. G2? So that was a, a, a that was a, a term that um, Josh Generation Two was. Um, that's the oh, card. Right, that's, right, that's, right. It's got that the one. it's got the warranty on it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You guys paid better attention than I did. That's good. Well, well, I edited, edited the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, number three, what we'll have a little bit to talk about because this is definitely a market that that's flexing. Um, it's a uh, Kenner Star Wars twelve back Obi Wan Kenobi uh, skew footer, graded an eighty five with an eighty sub, um, and sold for a buy it now of nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. And I'll tell you, twelve back A's are on friggin' fire right now. All down the line, you know. Um, you're seeing these a backs that are that have just pulled away from the pack from the the b's and c's and that's i mean you know anthony you're you're um you're an obi-wan collector what, yep. what is your uh actually i just pulled up um my the like i have a, a skew footer ben kenobi um it would never grade what is this an 85 yeah. um i just looked up the the po- like when i bought it i bought it in 2017 and the one I have, it's a 12A, obviously the skew footer, um, but the, the uh, proof of purchase is gone. It's lifted. It's not a full thickness uh, defect in the card. Um, right. I bought it in 2017 for uh, $680, uh, ungraded. Um, so just to give you some perspective, I thought that was actually a, a decent deal at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad deal. I wonder what the value on that would be today with uh, Chris's statement about the hotness, the heat, the heat, the hotness, heat. The, the, the heat, yeah. but just <laughs> it's just it's amazing how twelve backs, twelve A's have pulled away. I mean, like, because from the front they're identical, unless it's a skew footer, right? Yeah, you know, and it's the rookie card, it's the rookie card, right? Bring it, yeah, um, bring it back, card. card, but it, but bring it's it not, but card. it's not. If you watch, so I did a video on uh, five facts on twelve backs, and there's mm-hmm. not because there would be a uh, there'd be an Obi Wan, I believe. Maybe he doesn't have a white footer, but he does have a DT. He does have a white footer. He has a white footer. Does, does he yeah. have a white footer? Okay. Guess who doesn't have one of those? This guy. Hey. Yeah. That's a tough I mean, one. Not, 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 not going to happen. Not going to right. happen. I've had um, two in my entire career. Two DTs or two white footers? Toys. Two white footers. Okay. And both Two Obi-Wans? both been Leia's. Okay. They're, it's crazy, and I did touch on it in the video, but like a complete set of 12 backs for the the people that are the, the high dollar collectors it's like like 120 figures it's crazy so i mean you're looking at, at about an average of 10 variations and no one because you know you have like the um the 1232s can appear on any back so you know theoretically you know it's almost a permutation of that you know if you really want to get crazy with some of those so, all right, number two on the list is actually a really, really cool one. Something we don't see a lot of very often is a um, Hasbro GI Joe. It's a 1968. It's an action pilot air sea rescue set. So no figure at all. This is just accessories, right? So it's not graded, but it's complete with the box and then the the seller mentions of some extra pieces. Um, and it's sold in an open auction for um, Canadian uh, $14,100, which is American $11,285. Yeah, this is a piece. Talk about a CAS, something that would be right in our wheelhouse. Because, you know, the person that bought this is probably going to keep everything just kind of in the box on a shelf. And this thing, the colors are so 1960s. You know, it's just, it's beautiful. It's rare. It's cool. And yeah, we don't see a lot of the vintage, vintage GI Joes, the 60 GI Joe stuff, you know, on, on our high roller stuff that often. Yeah, that market shifted a lot because yeah. you had a you had a bunch of figures that um, you started to realize there was a lot of bodies out there, a lot of a lot of actual figures. Um, and I think that having the online marketplaces the way we did, we really started to realize that there was a lot more available than people thought. Okay. Um, one of the unique things about this one in particular 
um, that I think is really cool is the fact that this was one of the outfit sets that came in multiple boxes. So you had where I think Hasbro realized that they needed to be a little bit more like if you look at the lid on this, right? Like mm-hmm. the lid is cool and it kind of gives you a, a, a nice look, right? But it doesn't necessarily really impact you with what you're getting. And if you're a kid, and so I'm guessing this is total speculation that Hasbro realized we need to make this more visible like Barbie did, where they put all their outfit on a, you know, where you could see it. Like the yeah, actual they outfit blister and everything packed them right for a while. And so they kind of created like a blister pack um, that was like a, almost like a fold over box um, that had like the pilot on the side of the artwork. And then you actually have the outfit in it. So you okay. can see it more. Um, so because of that, it's almost like this was produced and then they changed it. And I think there was one other outfit that was like that too. Cause some of the accessories in this are very common. Okay. Which is but, what's unique here, you know, but the box and, and, and the, the piece in it, it's total and it's whole self is not so much. And everything is there. Right. Because you can see there's a lots of little things that could easily be missing from that. Right. And the last one is uh, uh, a number one. He's been on number one a, a couple times. And uh, one of my favorites and one that Ross and, and I disagree on liking. <laughs> um, so it's a Kenner uh, Star Wars 12 uh, Vec A Vinyl Cape Jawa. Um, it was great. It was graded in 85. Um, but now the, the cape has changed color. So it, it started, you're starting to see discoloration in the cape. Um, and that, and because of that, um, it sold for, uh, $13,988. And that was a buy it now. And we've seen, uh, mint ones sell for 20 plus thousand. So a huge discount for that, um, cape. And I, I would take a stained cape, vinyl cape Jawa any day of the week. It's funny. So it received the, the as a whole an 85 grade right? that that was the final grade on it Correct. so does that mean it's stained it the ore staining occurred after the grading right that's right. what we're assuming okay. right because in march we had another 12a vinyl cape um but this was graded after the discoloring so they graded it a 75 overall 85 85 70 uh for 9100 dollars. so it, i think it's interesting that it's basically the same figure but because one was graded before and one was graded after the discoloration occurred, um, that's about a four five thousand dollar difference, right? Yeah, yeah. This this illustrates the the difference I think in car grading versus toy grading, right? I think in toy grading you really got to make sure you're buying the piece and the grade and not just the grade. Yeah, right. Yeah. When you when you grade yeah. a card, it's very unlikely that the condition of that card is going to change, but Toy grading, there's a lot of stuff that can change after a grade. And this this is probably the most prevalent issue to show that. Okay, well, cool. Well, that it brings us to the end of the podcast. And um, usually we do a, um, well, what do you call it, Anthony? Uh, oh, yeah, our, our two cents. That's right. Yes, our yeah. two cents. Our two cents. Um, okay, so I came up with a little, a little recommendation. Uh, Steve, usually at the end of a show, we we plug something that we like in our life. Maybe not even collecting related. Um, Adult so, or bourbons. <laughs> well, this is related. So in the last episode, I um I uh, I recommended uh, liquid IV. Remember that? It's like a little additive to your water to help you hydrate. Right. This does the exact opposite. So this is this is actually a uh, hard cider mill in New Jersey called Burnt Mills. Okay. Um, we actually, my, my, my kids elementary school just had a fundraiser there this past Saturday, uh, Sunday. And, um, um, there's a great local brewery. They actually do sell nationwide and this particular flavor, fall spice this time of year, um, is actually pretty good. And it's a great brewery. It's local. It has a lot of revolutionary war history. Actually it's called burnt mills because, uh, the British burned it down because they wouldn't give up their flour to them. Um, and, um, uh, in the fall, I do enjoy a hard cider, and uh, nice. you can pick it up. Burnt Mills I'm gonna check it hard out. cider. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you a question. Did um, either Burnt Mills or Liquid IV give us any money for these endorsements? Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I actually so bought a four pack and, and uh, I had for, actually buy it. But... Venture. I mean, it's a for profit venture. I'm just saying. And neither I mean, did uh, Star Wars started. Risk. Star Wars Risk did not, you know. Yeah. Go. 10 grand. 10 grand, 5 grand, 1 grand. <laughs> Home box. 
Well, I'm, gonna, I'm sending. You, I'm going to send the brewery this maybe. clip, and maybe uh, I'll get a free four pack of False Spice. We'll nice. Worth it. Nice. Worth, right. send, worth I'll it. send you each. I'll send you each one of them. Now we're cooking <laughs> with bacon. There you go. All right. You go. Doing a. Well, I'll put my two cents in because I'm your guest, so I'll throw that in really quick. Cool. And that is nice. uh, coming out in. Let's see. What is it? It is. Uh, in 2022, early 2022, Slash's new album is coming out uh, February, February nice. uh, 11th. Um, it is him and Mile Kennedy's and the Conspirators. Brent Fitz is the drummer for Slash. He is a huge toy collector. Yeah. So go out and buy the album, guys, and check out that because slash takes us all the way back through our collecting days, all the way into some of our childhoods and some of our, uh, teenage years. Um, cause I do believe that music is right alongside our passion behind collecting and, uh, you know, to, to, to have that music and live it, but, um, to support somebody who is in that collector world. Um, he's a really big, uh, he's a star Wars collector. He's really big in the world of evil can evil stuff. Nice. Um, and has some really unique stuff. And uh, so anyway, so uh, that's my two cents is, hey, that album's coming out soon. The first single just dropped. So if you can go check it out, cool. um, the album comes awesome. out in February and uh, definitely go check it out. Nice. Awesome. That'd be awesome. Good advice. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been, um, well, we're glad to be back. Um, and, and, and thanks for putting up with what was supposed to be a shorter show, but I absolutely failed. So um, <laughs> <laughs> until next time. Keep collecting. My friends. My friends. That's it.